All right, good evening. I was going to say good morning again. Good evening. Good morning to those of you who are watching it tomorrow morning, but good evening everybody else. Good to be with you tonight and uh, looking forward to sharing what the Word of God has for us this evening. All right, so looking forward to get into that. Now, let me uh, jump straight in. Growing up, <laughs> all of us have done it. Some of us are still doing it. <laughs> Have you ever heard that I'm a five-year-old child trapped in a 50-year-old body or something like that, Tracy? Good evening. So most of us have done it and some of us are still doing it. We're talking about growing up. You know, when you're growing up, uh, it was reported that uh, uh, a lot of children between the ages of nine and 12 experience what they call growing pains. Judy, good evening. And growing pains was something that affected the legs of, of a lot of children, um, the thighs, the calves, the shins, behind the knees. They would get regularly, basically each night, they would get some sort of pain in both their legs. Well, the Mayo Clinic in America uh, did a study, did research, actually found that there was no scientific proof to what we call growing pains in children. However, it's still there that children between the ages of 9 and 12 experience growing pains. You know, the other thing that children who are growing up experience is that children who are growing up are growing up to be more and more like their parents. <laughs> more and more like their parents, acting more and more like their parents. So it's a natural thing, right? It's just, that's normal, uh, you know, growing up. Yeah, you know, the Apostle Paul, uh, in writing to the church at Ephesus, tells them to grow up. He's not telling them to grow up as far as, come on, you bunch of immature believers, start growing up. Or, you know, he's not rebuking them like he would have, say, a church at Corinth for their carnality. He's basically saying that when you grow up, you're going to grow up in Christ. You're going to become more and more like Christ. Sue Ellen, good evening. Now, the thing about what you have to remember, really, when you read the Bible, is that Paul's letters, and we often take the letters of Paul and look at them individually, or they're written to Christians. You've got to remember that Paul's letters are written to the, the church body, the, 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 the corporate meeting of the church. Though we get a lot of good things out of these epistles for each other, for ourselves, nothing wrong with that. But we've got to remember that Paul is specifically writing to a body of believers. Those who have been born again, baptized, a church that's been established, a church that's going. Paul wrote to the churches, the churches at Corinth, the churches of Galatia, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. Um, you know, and then you've got the pastoral epistles of Timothy and Titus. So, but Paul's main epistles were written to churches. And so he's saying to churches about growing up. You understand, folks, that when churches are growing or when churches are starting, establishing, churches as well have growing pains. Uh, some of those pains are not too severe, but some are very severe. Uh, some cause a lot of discomfort, some minor niggling, right? But there's growing pains in churches. The other thing about this is mainly what Paul is saying is that when the church starts to grow up into Christ, it's going to look more and act like the Savior. Now, I want you to notice firstly that the church is the body of Christ. Now, I want you to have a look at this in verse 14. He says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Firstly, I need you to understand that the church is the body of Christ. I want you to go back to Ephesians chapter 1, and I want you to have a look at verse 22. He says this, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him, that's Jesus, to be the head of, 
over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church is his body. There are some who believe in a universal body of Christ, meaning everybody who is saved is part of the body of Christ, the church. Well, there's a couple of issues with that. There's some misunderstanding. There's some wrong theology. Everybody who is saved is in the family of God. Now look at chapter 3 and verse number uh, 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, right, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. So everyone who is saved, is part of the family of God. That means this, brethren, that we have brothers and sisters in other denominations or other churches. If they're saved by grace through faith, they're born again, they're brothers and sisters in Christ. You understand, I'm sure, that Baptist people are not going to be the only ones in heaven, though it sounds like, according to some, that may be the case, but it's not. But what, what it is, is that there is a family of God that every born-again believer is adopted into. But we're talking about the body, the, the church, the body of Christ. You, you have to understand and establish in your mind that when Jesus came, he came to establish or start one kind of church. He didn't come to start denominations. He didn't come to start Christian schools. Um, he didn't come to start any other kind of organization. He came to start a church, a local autonomous visible church of which everybody uh, who is saved and baptized should be added unto. All right. So when you talk about the church, whenever I talk about the church, I talk about a local body of believers. All right. So the body of Christ to me is the local church. And if you notice something about Ephesians 1 and verse number 23, it says the church which is his body is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Excuse me, I'm just having a whack at the dog. All right, go away. <laughs> I tell you. Hey, Brother Michael, good evening. Notice something. It says the body, the fullness of him, that's Jesus that filleth all in all. So the fullness of Christ ought to feel that local church. And so when we talk about the body here, this church growing up, it ought to be filled with the fullness of Jesus Christ. As you read through the book of Ephesians, you see this filling as a common theme. As a matter of fact, if you have a look at chapter 3 and verse 19, he says, And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So his church needs to be filled with all the fullness of God. All right? And then he says this in chapter 4 and verse 10. He that descended is the same that also ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Hey, Gavin, good evening. So when you look at this idea of the body of Christ, the church, Jesus is the head of this body. The body or the church is a local visible church organization, organism that Jesus wants to fill with the fullness of himself. So therefore, as the, the church grows up, it becomes, it looks and acts more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how it should be. So we see this in this passage of scripture or this this um this book right now so notice something else also in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21 under him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen so when it says and there should be glory in the church it's talking about praising in the church there ought to be praising in the church of the lord jesus christ why is that he's the head he's the one that fills it with himself the fullness of him that filleth all things, all right? And so therefore the church is the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ grows, now we're not just talking about numerically. Uh, we're talking about spiritually. Now, growing numerically, there's nothing wrong with that. The Lord adds to the church. He also subtracts. 
He adds to the church daily, okay, such as should be saved. So as the church grows spiritually, it ought to, as a body of believers, so Open Door Bible Church, as it grows spiritually, should look and act more like Jesus Christ. That's why there's some important things that need to take place in the church. So as you, as you look at it growing up to be more like him, um, just hang on a sec. All right, just had to give the, give the dog a smack. Um, so as you see the, the church growing up and looking more like him, how is that going to take place? The way it's going to take place is by this, the preaching of the word of God. Now look at what he says in chapter 4 again and look at verse number 11. It says, and he gave some apostles, Sasha, good evening. He gave some apostles and, some, and we're not going to get into the explanations of these things or anything, with not the time, but I just want to point something else out. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So if you look at these offices, which are held by men predominantly in the church. There's some ladies will teach a ladies class or whatever. It's fine. But we're talking about over the church. This is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a man's position. There were no female apostles. In the Old Testament, they had prophetesses. We get that. We know that Philip's daughters prophesied, but they weren't pastors of the church. So you've got these apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These men, Sister Jean, good evening, were to teach and preach the word of God to the church, okay? The churches that they were a part of. Now, notice what it says. It says that these apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers were given for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, so these men that preach the word, their responsibility was to edify, to build up and strengthen. Their responsibility was to work of the ministry. Uh, yes, to preach and teach, but we know also as, as shepherds, as pastors, we get around the flock and we, we minister to the flock. Then it says for the edifying. So when it says for the, sorry, for the perfecting means the maturing. And the edifying means the building up and the strengthening. So my responsibility as a preacher is to preach the word in such a manner that it helps God's people, the church, uh, mature. I'm there for the ministry and I'm there to edify, to strengthen and build up the body of Christ. Okay. Now, let me read it to you this way. All right. Without doing any injustice to this word body. So he says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the church of Christ. I'm talking about the denomination, I'm talking about church, because that word body, as we said, you go back to chapter one. Hey, brother Ian, good evening. You go back to chapter one, we're talking about the church, right? Now, if you go back down to verse number four, uh, 15 again, he says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole church fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of the church unto the edifying of itself in love so the whole idea the responsibility now as we grow up in him as we as we become more like him in in how we are to look so a church again for those that have just joined the, the church is to as we grow and mature, as we grow up into Christ, we're to look more like him and act more like him. Uh, you know, when you have someone who's born and they don't grow, there's a, there's a, there's a problem there. There's a disability there. Uh, there might be a disease. And sometimes if the, if the church is not growing, now I'm not just focused on numerically, I think as Baptists we focus too much on numbers, numbers, numbers. And again, I'm not against numerically growing but if the church is not growing spiritually and maturing in the things of christ there's a problem there there's a disablement there there's a dysfunction and most of the reason why that is is because the word of god is not being preached properly 
I, uh, I've said this before, I, I try and listen to all kinds of preaching. And I don't, I don't just listen to independent Baptist preaching either. I want to know what's being preached. I, I think other men have got some good messages. Um, but I've listened to some Baptist preaching that from, from the start to the finish is just high octane yelling all the way through it. Well, you know, that's like sounding brass and tingling. No one wants to sit in a congregation and hear someone yell from go to woe. No, no, no. You've got to, you've got to, you've, you've got to be wise when you're communicating the word of God. Do you use your voice as a fluctuate? Well, yeah, of course. Otherwise, you don't want to sit under monotone stuff either. But, you know, when you talk about preaching the word and, and the church is not growing spiritually, then there's a big problem. And it comes mainly from the feeding or the teaching or the preaching of the word of God. So it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, if anyone's out there thinking, oh, man, I would love to be a preacher. Well, just make sure that it's a call of God because we'll give a greater account before Jesus for those things. And uh, I tell you what, it's going to be a fearful day when preachers stand before Jesus Christ and give an account of what we've done with the word of God, making sure we're not handling the word of God deceitfully and we preach uncompromisingly the scriptures. And I'll tell you what, I those of you that know me, I, I don't cut it up and throw this out and throw that out. I'll just I'll just preach the word. It upsets people. All right. But there there are some especially if you've got a one track mind and you just you've got the blinkers on and you think, well, this is it and then someone comes along and says, Well hang on a second, what about this? For example, let me just throw this one out there. We talk about the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers and the common teaching is is that the apostles and prophets are not around anymore. (laughs) Well, there are only 12 apostles of Christ, we understand that. But one independent Baptist preacher, Clarence Sexton, said there were apostles to the church. Season, good evening. Um, Meaning that there were messengers, because basically that's what the word apostle means, a messenger, someone who's been sent with a message. And of course, today, we call them missionaries, okay? But if you were to notice this, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, notice something. He says this, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And I always ask myself the question and ask others, are we there yet? Have we come... To the unity of the faith, have we come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man? Have we come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? No. We're still growing up into him. We're still maturing. We're still developing. Now, as a a church, as a body of believers, which incorporates us individuals, right? Because the church is people. It's not bricks and mortar. We know that. So, right, if you were to think about that, You'd have to think, well, hang on a second. If there were guys in the church that weren't being used, say, because you talk about these guys, Paul's writing the church at Ephesus, and there were a plurality of elders, pastors. And uh, so therefore, if you have people in the church that has the gift to be able to preach or teach, and they're not being utilized, what's going to happen to the body? Well, it's going to it's going to not function properly. It's not going to grow as it should. It's going to be stunted in its growth. It's not going to look how it should look. Now, again, I'm not talking about bricks and mortar and, and beautifying the building. I'm talking about I'm talking about the people of God. Now, they're not going to look how they should look, and so therefore, through the ministry of the word. The church grows up into him and looks and acts like Jesus Christ. That's how it should be. Which when I look at some churches and I look at some things that that, that happens in some churches, I I often think not, not, I'm I'm just, I just ask myself the question, in, in what way does that represent Christ? We know that Jesus was meek, he was mild. We know that he, uh, Hillary, good evening. We know that, that he had some boldness about him. We know that, you know, he loved. We know that he was, he was, he was the perfect man, God man. We know that. And I look at some churches and I think, wow, you are so far from, 
the representation of Jesus Christ. And God forbid, I pray that our church would grow up into Christ and look and act more like Jesus because the church is his body. He feels the fullness of it. And so therefore, it's very important that through the ministry of the word, people grow and mature up into the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice something as we hurry to a close. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. Fitly joined together. I believe wholeheartedly that God has people that fit. There's, 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 for example, in our church at Open Door, of course, we have people from all walks of life. And, and if I was to sit here and I was to, and I won't, so for those of you from Open Door, you can breathe. But I think about our church and our church is God has fitted people in our church who have been wounded, who have been hurt, either through other churches or through uh, broken relationships or whatever it is. That's that's the fit for our church. When God brings people into our church, he brings he brings the wounded. He brings, he brings the ones that, that are not walking properly. He brings the ones that just, you know, <laughs> the other church, well, you don't look like us and we don't want you. But then there are some that come along and I just know, I don't say anything. I look at them and I think, you don't really fit. You don't really fit. And of course, down the track, they do end up going. But God has a certain fit. Every church that is the Lord's, he fits people to that church. And it's important that we understand that because if, if, if I was to grow the church, and I can't, but if I was to grow the church, I, I, would, not be, uh, I would not be precise, I would not be perfect. I, I would want a church filled with people that, that have the same personality type as me, that just, you know, gets excited and shouts and all sorts. That would be me, but I'm glad I don't, I don't fit the church in a sense. I don't put people in there. God puts people in there. This is what he said to the church at Corinth. Let me read this to you back in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I tell you, brethren, you know, I grew up in an era where, where the priest like, bless God, you need to go out soul winning and grow the church, grow the biggest church, grow the biggest church. Do you know how many pastors I know that got so burdened and distressed and depressed because their churches weren't growing and the word was, grow your church, grow your church. Now listen, here's a news flash: Man can't grow the church. Only Jesus grows the church. God fits the people in the church. And I love the people that God has fitted at Open Door Bible Church. Listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So let me read it to you this way. God now, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the church as it hath pleased him. Because Paul is talking about uh, the church here. He's talking about the church. You go further on down in verse number 27. He says, Ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church. God sets. God tempers the body together. And that's what he says in verse 24. For our comely parts have no, com uh, no need, but God hath tempered the body together. So as we talk about growing up into him and being fitly joined, God fits, God tempers, God sets people in the body, the church, the local church. And so every member that comes along or every person that comes along and, and just stays and fellowships and you, you look at it and say, yeah, you fit, you fit. But he also says this, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body under the edifying of itself in love. Every joint has a role. Every joint. Now you think about your physical body, because in 1 Corinthians 12, he uses the physical body as an analogy. You look at the physical body, every joint that you have has a role to play. Once that joint seizes or that joint gets arthritis or something happens, the, 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 the function of it breaks down. But every joint, my, I've got different joints in my feet, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm not a, you know, whatever, I'm not a biologist or anything like that. But we all know and understand the joints. And the older you get, the more creaks and cracks and groans and all sorts of things. And then you know, wow, yeah, I am alive. I've got pain. But, you know, the Bible says that every joint 
Every joint has a role to play. Every joint supply. Don't ever think for one moment, even if you're not at Open Door, if you're in another church, don't think for one moment that you don't have a role to play. Every joint has a role to play. And it happens through the effective working of the measure of every part. And I love that about church, that it's not about one man, the pastor. It's about everybody working together. And it says it increases of the church or increase of the body under the edifying of itself in love. When you think about the local church, it really should edify itself in love. God is love. We know that. And, and you know, so many people, oh, well, you know, <laughs> the whole love thing through independent Baptists is really not a not on the forefront of a lot of people's minds. But, you know, when we talk about love, it ought to. We ought to love one another. You know, none of us are perfect. I said this on Sunday. None of us are perfect. All of us have got flaws. All of us have got foibles. Everyone's got something going on. But we ought to love each other. We ought to love each other to Christ. We ought to love each other back to Christ. We ought to love each other and encourage each other and so on. And you know what? When that happens, then guess what's going to happen? The Bible says it's going to increase through the edifying of itself in love. And it doesn't mean, again, numerically, it means just growing up and maturing and being more like Christ. When I have people come and visit Open Door, I want them to think when they come here, wow, this is just like Jesus would be. That's the testimony all of us have. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that as a church, we've had a testimony for a long time that we've been loving and accepting when people come in. That's the testimony that's been there. And that's a real blessing. So, folks, as we grow up, for those, if you're in a different church, at your church, but for those of us at Open Door, as we grow up in him, we ought to become more like him. We ought to look more like him. We ought to act more like him. That's the goal. But only Jesus can do that through the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. And I love the fact that he is the fullness. He's the fullness of the church. He filleth all things. And he wants to fill the church with himself. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and your blessing to us. We thank you, Lord, for the encouragement to grow up into you, uh, to mature spiritually, to be more like you. And I pray that that would be our goal in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining tonight. I appreciate that. Have a great night and a good day tomorrow. Lord willing, we'll see each other again at 7.30 tomorrow night. Until then, God bless. Goodbye for now.